All right, here's a video I know a lot of you have been waiting for. Color correction, color grading, color matching, everything that has to do with color. In this video, I'm gonna show you how to take footage that you shot straight from your camera and add a little bit of spice and style to it. Let's jump right in. Alrighty, I'm sure you guys are excited for this one. I know I am. I love talking about color grading, color correction, and the whole color process. What is color grading? What is color correction? And... In simplest terms, it is the way to evolve your footage from how it looks out of camera to the stylistic uh, choice and final result that you want. So I've imported a handful of clips here that were all shot in what's called log. Now, a lot of different cameras shoot in log, and essentially it just flattens the image. This image does not look very contrasty. Uh, the colors are very dull, and all that really means is that all of the information is there and it just allows you to kind of push and pull to the style that you want. If you want it to be bright and vibrant, you can do that. If you want it to be dark and moody, you can do that as well. And that's what I'm going to show you in today's video. We're also going to show you how to shot match your clips together. So that way, uh, when you have a whole sequence, like uh, we have these two clips here, both of them are running on the same day. And then drinking from this bottle here, you know, we want these to look the same as well as we have this three shot sequence of uh, this man walking through a, a nice little field here. And this one was shot later at night, clearly like blue hour, but this is golden hour. And so these two shots should match up nicely. So first of all, how do you get to your color tools? You are simply going to click on the clip you want to work on. And then at the top here, we've been talking about like the video and even some of the speed page, but now we're moving on to the color page. So in here, we can see we have color enhancement, white balance, tone, 3D LUTs, and color match. Now you notice that color enhancement and white balance both have auto settings. Color enhancement is basically taking a look at the colors and seeing how it can enhance it. I know it's self-explanatory. If you're shooting log, I find it doesn't work all that great. If you can see that it made the colors that are here a bit punchier, but you know, it doesn't look great on its own. Color enhancement auto, uh, I think works great when you have clips that are uh, what's called Rec 709 or kind of a standard color profile. So something like this, uh, this isn't log. You see, you see that the colors are already pretty vibrant. It's pretty contrasty, it's not flat. So if I hit auto for color enhancement here, we can see that kind of makes it a little bit more cinematic looking uh, and it just kind of helps uh, push the colors a little bit more. But of course you can go in and adjust the values to your own liking. So if you like it to look brighter, more vibrant, you can do that. You can keep it kind of darker and then adjust the color punchiness threshold from here. So now we're gonna talk about white balance and for this, uh, I'm actually going to jump to this last clip here. Now, the auto for white balance is going to kind of look at your overall image and basically take a guess. So if I hit auto here, it made this very green because that's kind of the opposite of where it started. It recognized that was a very blue heavy uh, image. And so it's like, all right, let's add a lot of green. Again, the auto, sometimes it's a hit or miss. Sometimes it nails it. But a lot of times you're going to have to do things uh, more manually. And one of those tools is going to be with the eyedropper. Now, when you snag this, you basically want to find something in your image that you know is white. So a white t-shirt, a white piece of paper, anything that you know in real life is white. Because when you find that item and click on it, you're basically telling, hey, this is supposed to be the value of white and it will adjust the entire image uh, accordingly. So I'm going to use the whites of his eyes and it's not a perfect uh, white, obviously. So this isn't a perfect test. I could maybe try to get the white of his beard potentially, maybe something like right here. Still made it a bit too blue. Like I said, something like a white piece of paper, something that's pure white is going to be the best case scenario for that eyedropper. Other than that, you can, of course, just adjust your temperature and your tint manually. Your temperature going to the right is going to warm things up. Going to the left is going to cool things down. 
And then your tint, if we go to the right, is going to add your more magenta, your more reds. And going to the left is going to make things very green. And it's all about finding a balance of everything. Uh, most of the time, you are not going to move these like crazy, especially the tint one. Very, very rarely uh, are you going to adjust it uh, more than, you know, a couple values to the left or to the right. The color temperature this is where you can kind of introduce your style a little bit because maybe it was a warm day that you filmed, but you want it to look uh, more cool or you want it to look like nighttime or something. Then you could go really blue and you'll notice how if I jump down to the tone and go to exposure, I could like keep it pretty low, add some contrast. And now the shot looks like it was filmed at night, right? But if I go color temperature to the right here pretty far and then we bring up the exposure now it looks like it could be uh kind of looks like morning time to me um so it's pretty heavy out over there of course bring it back a little bit more to the realism this is more just kind of average daylight uh so yeah you can see how you can kind of color grade your image to give yourself the style that you want now, beyond just your basic corrections, you have what's called a 3D LUT. And a LUT, think of it like a filter that I'm sure we all have used on social media. It kind of just puts over a layer of film, so to speak, uh, that is styled in a certain way. And so you can see here that we have our basic LUT pack installed when we downloaded Filmora 11. And Everyone pretty much knows all of these different films, and these are really cool ones to have kind of pre-installed. So if you want to give yourself more of a 007 vibe, kind of it's very orange and blues, uh, which you can see in the James Bond films. Those look awesome. Of course, you always got to have a good black and white filter. Harry Potter, this is going to be very blue heavy because it's always so dark and so uh, blue toned in those. And remember, not every clip is going to work with a LUT perfectly uh, because it's all about how you shoot it at the end of the day. And so some of these work great. Some of these work better than others. Go Walking Dead. So I actually really like the 007 one here. Uh, I just think it looks cool. And for all these, of course, we can always toggle things on and off to see how it's affecting our film. And maybe... With the LUT, there's quite a bit of saturation, so maybe we want to lower it just a touch. So that looks pretty cool. But now what about this color matching down here? Remember, these two shots uh, right here are filmed at the same time of day, so we want these to be pretty much matched. So the first thing we want to do is uh, grade uh, one of them, and it's always a good idea to start with what's called your hero image. And so I'm going to start right here because, you know, our subject's mainly in frame. We can kind of see how the overall image is affected. So let's go ahead and just kind of make some adjustments here. There's nothing that is pure white uh, in the image, so I'm not going to use my auto color temperature. And uh, sometimes if you know you're going to want to use a LUT in a situation like this, I'll actually start uh, with the LUT this time because you can make fine adjustments based on the LUT that you're kind of going for and starting with. So we want, let's see what, no, Harry Potter again, too blue, too blue. Warm film, I'd say it's a little too punchy for my taste. Let's see if we bring down the warmth though. The nice thing is since everything's a slider, you can kind of just play with it and see what works. You know what, that doesn't look half bad. So now we want to get this shot to match this shot. And to do that, we are simply going to select this clip. You can see all this stuff reset. Uh, and we're going to turn on color match. And I'm going to go to comparison view. And then on the left-hand side, this is our new viewer where we basically can cycle through our entire timeline. So you can actually see our old kitchen film over there we can see the girl running clips because it is everything that you have on your timeline and so I just want to go to this clip where we have this and then I'm going to hit 
match. Now you can see that it tried to analyze this image and match it over on the right hand side here, but it didn't do it perfectly, right? Uh, and so what you can do is actually then continue to make fine adjustments. Uh, in the comparison view, you can always change the level of matching. So all the way to the left is going to be no adjustments, all the way right obviously is uh, whatever it guessed. And so I'm going to leave it right there for now. But since we still have this comparison view, it's kind of nice because I can go in and just kind of look on the left hand side here and I'm just kind of judging by eye. It kind of looks darker here. Contrast. The only hard part here is since this was shooting into the sun, it makes his shirt look very uh, kind of washed out because almost like a not a lens flare, but just that atmospheric conditions of shooting this way versus shooting this way. Everything is much more contrasty, which is fine. Uh, we are going to make it a little bit warmer, and we're going to add in that same LUT. We're going to bring down contrast quite a bit. This one was pretty contrasty, and I want to make it match. All right, and that looks, uh, colors are looking pretty pretty close there, so I'm going to go ahead and hit OK. And so now if I were to play these two clips, you can see that they're the same general level of warmness, and they've got more color. Definitely looks better than the log look. But you know what? There's a lot of advanced uh, color tools that we want to jump into. And so for that, we will take a look at these uh, two clips here. So again, we're going to click our image. We're going to go to the color page. And again, all these tools we just talked about are really nice, fast and efficient tools for editing color. But we want to get into some advanced stuff. And for that, we are going to look at the advanced uh, icon down here at the bottom of this tool and it's going to bring out a new window. We have our viewer right here and we have a bunch of different presets and custom LUTs that we can scroll through. So we saw some of the uh, same ones that we had in our other list but there's also a whole bunch more. And then right next to the preset panel we have the adjust. So again we still have the color enhancement, we have white balance, we have 3D LUT but now we have uh, much better color tools, more specific. We have more actions with lighting, HSL, vignetting. And the reason I like this advanced panel too is we also get a histogram, which is really important because this is basically a representation of the image. It may not look like it much, but watch what happens if I, for example, grab the shadows and bring it all down here. You can see the histogram goes to the left, go to the right, she goes towards the top, and the histogram essentially represents uh, light values. So the closer to the left we go is underexposed, the closer to the right is uh, the higher part of exposure, and if we go, if things are really far to the right, like if I really push this, and we get just kind of a solid block over here, this is what's called clipped or overexposed, and we definitely don't want to do that. So now let's go through and actually color grade this clip. And again, you can do this a couple different ways. You can uh, strictly go from here and just start messing around with, you know, creating contrast and adding color. Or if you are new to color grading, then go ahead, start with a preset, and then you can make adjustments based on that. And so we can go in and Cyberpunk one is it's pretty cool. You know what, this is, it's kind of interesting. Uh, it's obviously a little underexposed, but, you know, for some, it's it's unique looking. And so I really like this. So I didn't think I'd go with the cyberpunk LUT, but it kind of inspired me. So I'm going to start with uh, this preset here. And now I'm going to go into my adjustments. We can see we're pretty underexposed. So I'm going to start with our light. It would help to turn it on first. Uh, so now I can bring up the highlights. So I went ahead and just kind of made adjustments in my light tab, uh, but then you can make even better adjustments also in the color. These are gonna be a lot of the standard tools that you're used to, exposure, brightness, contrast, vibrance, saturation, and you can kind of go in here and make really big adjustments. 
your HSL curves, this is basically you're kind of picking one of these colors and then you're adjusting how those colors are affected. So we can see that we have a lot of like purple hues in here. So if I select one of these purple hues and then I can actually adjust this and it's going to take anything in the image that is this hue and you're going to adjust it. And the reason that this is really important is because right now we have really cool, unique colors in this image, but her skin is so far off of realism and it just doesn't look that great being so purpley. So by selecting this, I can change the hue and look how her skin just kind of comes back to life. And we still have our unique colors of, uh, I really like the wood greens and trees and everything, but she just looks so much better than, you know, when you bring it back, it just kind of looks unnatural. And so by bringing this, it looks so, so good. And you can adjust the saturation. Obviously that's pushing it too far. You can make it to where like your subjects look almost black and white in a world of color if you want. It's all about taste and style. And then again, luminance is basically how bright that thing is. So again, I can make her brighter to stand out. I can make it kind of deeper. And finally, we have the vignette, which is going to bring in uh, a vignette from the edges, kind of feathers in. And you can either have a bright vignette or a dark. Obviously, the dark is, is the more common. Now, Never make it look like this unless you're trying to make it look like someone's looking through a, a, a scope or binoculars or something because this just looks cheesy and amateur at best. But what you can do is adjust it and then feather it. So we've made all the adjustments that we want to here on the side. And one nice thing is if you want to see from basically where you turn everything off to see where you started, rather than having to go through and shut everything off manually, I can just click this little eye in the top right and you can see how like much better the image looks once we've graded it. This is what we started with. This is where we're at. It's really unique. It's stylized like crazy and you can view it a couple different ways as well. So if you want to see uh, again what you've done, you can kind of create this split level. You can split it this way side by side with full images. And obviously you can play through the clip as well to see how your color grade looks throughout the entire thing. Because maybe you color graded, you know, this part that we did and then she brings in the water bottle and it looks terrible. Then you can make adjustments based on that. Now rather than match... Now here... Now what we want to do now is take the grade that we put on this clip and put it on our other clip of her running. But if you remember from the uh, first test we did where we used the color match tool, that is basically allowing the kind of software to analyze the clip and kind of match it to look relatively close. But what happens if we've made a lot of really unique adjustments and we want to very specifically copy and paste those adjustments to other clips? That's where we want to save our own Preset. And so I'm going to go in here and say, you know, Cyberpunk Woods. You know, whatever name you want to put it to it, but you're basically making your own LUT. So if I hit OK there, and then I hit OK out of here, we can see, boom, there's our new uh, crazy cool looking clip. And we want to add that to here. Now, I'll show you if I color match it, if I turn on color match here, hit comparison view, and we scrub on the timeline to the clip we just color graded. So this one, and I hit match. You can see it's, it did its best to match it. It made it darker. It made the color temperature a lot more blue. And this isn't bad, right? Like, again, this was just a quick analysis of the image. But it doesn't know that I used the cyberpunk LUT. It's not reattaching all that information it is just trying to quickly match them uh, to kind of close enough. And so what a better way to do it is to, again, go into the advanced panel with a new one. And now when we go to all presets, we can go to custom, and we're going to see the ones that we added. And so if I click on that, you can see it now adds it to this image. 
most of the time you're still going to have to make some adjustments unless you're literally filming in the same exact spot, same exact lighting conditions. Most of the time you have to apply it and then still go in and, you know, adjust things to be somewhat different because here she's a lot more in the shadow than she was in this one. So, for example, I would probably go in and let's see for light. I'm going to bring up the shadows a bit. And then if I hit OK, it's going to save it here. And see how much better and closely more matched this looks. Like, look at those greens. Like, that's perfect. Her skin tones are right on point, perfectly matched. So there you have it. That is all of the basic and advanced tools for color grading inside of Filmora. Hopefully you guys learned something. And if you want to see more, stick around because we've got plenty of more tools to talk about.